Hi, in this video today I want to talk about Google Forms. Google Forms is a great way of getting surveys out to people and students via email. Fantastic way to do that and very simple. So I want to show you the basics of using Google Forms. Here I am in my Google Drive. So to get to this screen here, you'd go to drive.google.com. Uh, or if you're in your mail also, or any Google products, you see you get this nine square thing here and you can get anywhere around to any of your products. So um, I'm right at the moment in, in Drive and I can create a document or a spreadsheet or a presentation directly from here. But to get to a form, I'm gonna click on Drive, gets me to this page and I'm gonna click on New over here. It's not in the first menu, but if you just drop down to More, you'll see Google Forms right here. So once I select that, I get a new Google Form. Like all of these Google products, the form is online. So it's now saving this form and it's saved as I go along. It will, you will never lose any of your work and you can access this form from any computer at any time. When you get at the start, you'll see that there's a number of settings at the top. If you just want people from school to be able to log in and, and do the form and they need a Seton Catholic College address, then you'll leave that tick there. If you're sending this form to parents or people outside the school, then you will need to unselect that. So it gives you a warning, you're sure uh, that you want to do that. So um, Automatically collect the respondent's Seton Catholic College username. So if the first one is ticked, you'd want to select perhaps the second one, you'll automatically select their name. Uh, their name will be selected. Uh, if you have a long survey, they can show a progress bar. Uh, only allow one response per person. That means that each person will only be allowed to do one response. So for, in the example of get, collecting information about levers jackets, we just want one response per person. We don't want people going back and doing three different responses. So you can select that. And also you can shuffle the order of the questions so they don't appear in the same order that you create them. You've got a... Uh, a a title for your form so I can just give the form a title I can uh, then just des describe what the forms about here and then I can start adding questions now there's a multitude of different kinds of question types and this is right here under question type the first one by default is multiple choice you can get people to enter text uh, which is a small amount of text uh, you can get paragraph text which gives them a much bigger space to answer in multiple choices as it sounds you get a number of different options and you can select as many as you want for the options um, and they will just get a little click button there to click and you can add another one as well uh, you can get check boxes which allows people to select more than one option so that's very handy if you uh, if the answer to this question may be more than one thing with um, with multiple choices so it can only be one Choose from a list, so this will just drop down a list, very similar. They just they get a list and they drop down and select from the list. Uh, a scale, it might be a one to five scale from um, very important to not important, and they get a, a scale from one to five, you get to choose. It could be from one to 10 or one to four, and you get to define that, so that's scale. In a grid, you get rows and columns, and I'm gonna show you an example of that in a second with all these buttons. You could also uh, get them to enter a date or exactly an exact time. For all of these questions, you can select whether this question is required or not. So if they don't answer the question, it will give them a little error message saying you need to go back and do that question there. If I go back to multiple choice and under advanced settings, there's a different advanced setting for each one of these. So uh, for example, for the multiple choice, you get to shuffle the order around um, of the multiple choice for the paragraph text you might want to make sure that the text that they enter contains a minimum character count. So if you're collecting an um, assignment and you want it to be at least 100 words, it will give them an error unless there is at least 100 words or characters in there. For the text option, you get some data validation options, which just says that make sure that the data that they enter is either a number or a text or a regular expression. So. Um, for the number one, you might want to specify that the number has to be exactly between two numbers greater than a certain number. So you get all kinds of options in these advanced settings for each question. Um, once you've finished adding all of your questions, you get a number of options at the bottom. After they've submitted their form, you've got a message that you can customise. You can show them a link to submit another response so they can go back if you want them to respond more than once. 
You can publish and show uh, the results. So if you've got a number of questions in there, as soon as they've done the form, they will then get to see what everyone else has done. And then another one, allow responders to edit responses after submitting. So that's a good one if, um, for example, for the leavers jackets, I've uh, selected that one there so that uh, students can log back in, they can get back with a link to the form and they can just edit what they already have. Let's look at a form. This is a, um, a form for parents on iPads. You can see that you can ent enter pictures, you can add pictures. So I've got a picture at the top there and I've got a picture here at the bottom of the form. Uh, the first question here about what child your year is in. Um, if I click on any of these, I can edit them. And I, um, For this particular survey, it was either year 7, 8 or 11. So you can always go back and change the form. If I click on View Live Form here, this is going to show you exactly what it would look like when eventually I send this form to somebody. You can see at the top here I've got a custom header picture. You can... In, there's some really nice headers that you can get now with forms or you can include your own picture that will go along the top of the survey there which gives you some customization. You can choose all kinds of different themes. So making the form look nice is really important as well and that happens through themes. So over here in the menu bar if you click on change theme you can see down the right hand side you get all these different themes the way that it's going to look. Um, so the form will, will look nice by itself but if I go down and choose Let's choose this uh, town hall kind of form. It will show you straight away what it's going to look like. Um, the test form that we've got here, that kind of the heading. So you, if you click on each of those, it'll give you an idea. So this would be a good camping one. You can see also now you've got this option to customize the form. So you can change the image at the top, the title, the description, uh, options, the background, the page background. You get all kinds of different uh, options here. So. If you do want to change the image, you can select your own one there at the top. So themes are great. So you can see for these ones here, the parents just choose which year they're in. Uh, yes or no question. You can see because I haven't answered that one there, it's saying that this is a required question. I need to answer that. And this is the example of the grid one where you've got strongly disagree to strongly agree and things down the side, questions down the side, and parents can or people can select the different buttons there. In this one here, you've got a number of different things that you can select. Okay, so that's what the form ends up looking like. The form can be done on a mobile device, looks great, or obviously on the laptop, which I'm working on, on now. When you finish writing all of your questions, up in the top right here, we've got send form. So the way that you can send your form is via this link. So this big, long, huge URL here, you could send that to somebody, and when they click on that, they will go to this form here. It will open up exactly like that. Um, if you click on short URL, it gives you something much neater and nicer that you could possibly put on a board uh, that look, look better in a newsletter, for example. You can share the link via Twitter or Facebook or on Google+. It, you can uh, select the people here that you want to email. So rather than creating a separate email, you could select the people's email addresses here. Um, the subject is just the name of the form and you can write in your own message there and click on send and that will automatically generate an email with this link so that they can go and do, do the survey. Uh, the embed option also gives you the option to embed that form and you can do that, um, embed that into sector if you wanted to. So using this code here, copying this code, will allow you to embed this exact form and it will go into the sector page. You'll notice that there's been 41 responses to this uh, survey that I've sent out. All of the responses are automatically collected and collated for you. So um, I can view the responses that will open up the spreadsheet that collects the responses. Now this spreadsheet is uh, created automatically by Google as soon as the first person uh, responds to your survey. So you can see along the top are all of the different questions and then it shows a timestamp of when each person responded and then it shows the answers to all of those different questions. Now looking at through all of those might take a while so one of the things that I like to do is something that looks like a summary of the, all of the responses so it does some graphs that kind of summarize all of those things so if you go to form show summary of responses
now we get some graphs that give us a really good summary of what what people said in all of those um, different questions. So here's a question, your child is more organised with the use of the iPad. We can see very quickly at a glance what everybody said for that question. So this is really powerful, um, being able to collect this information from people. It's very simple um, and very really, really easy to use. That's basically forms uh, in Google in a nutshell.